So here's a principle to think about today. Christians ought to be shaped by the gospel as opposed to the world or the culture around us. In other words, we draw our values from the gospel. We don't draw our values from, from the world. Now, this is tricky because it's very easy to just accept the norms and values around us without working them through the grid of the gospel and what we know about Christ. So one example of this might come out of the book of James. Chapter 2, James talks about not doing favoritism in the church. They were allowing the rich people to come in. They'd seat them in the front in the best seats. And they'd look at somebody that's poor and say, sit here by my feet. And so they're giving preferential treatment based on how much money someone might make. Now, I want to bring you, fast forward you maybe 1,600 years to a commentator named Matthew Henry. Matthew Henry is one of the greatest commentators of all time. He wrote a whole Bible commentary from Genesis to Revelation, and his commentaries are not that used today. But over the last three, four hundred years, most pastors have used Matthew Henry at some point. The great English pastor Charles Spurgeon said, first among the mighty commentaries for general use is Matthew Henry. He talked about selling certain things you have to go and buy Matthew Henry's commentary set. Now, what's interesting is as good of a commentator and a pastor as Matthew Henry is, when he gets to this passage in James chapter 2 about partiality, he misinterprets it to the point where he almost gets it backwards. Let me read to you what Matthew Henry says, but first understand the context. In Matthew Henry's day, they would seat you in worship almost parallel to the feudal system of that day. Lord of the Manor might have a reserve row up here. He might sit with his family. The servants would sit somewhere in the gallery. This was true with all the churches there in England at that time. Now, as you remember, James tells us not to seat people according to economic status. Matthew Henry's day, they're doing that. I want you to listen to what he writes in his commentary. When he gets to this passage, Matthew Henry says, uh, but we must be careful not to apply here to the common assemblies for worship. For in these, certainly, there must be appointed different places for persons according to their rank and circumstances without sin. In other words, Matthew Henry is saying, what James says in chapter 2 really would not apply to what we're doing in our churches. I read that and I think, Matthew Henry, that's exactly what James had in mind. Don't see people according to economic status. There could not be a closer parallel to what James says. I think Matthew Henry is a great commentary. I'll continue to read his comments and use them in various sermons. But in this particular case, we have an example where his churches and, and, and apparently Matthew Henry in this area are being shaped by the culture instead of shaped by the gospel. The gospel says we shouldn't exercise partiality in the churches. Matthew Henry, because he's absorbed into this particular culture, has a blind spot. Every Christian has a blind spot. We have to pray for God's grace. We have to talk to each other. We want the Spirit to break down the hardness in our hearts and Help us to see those blind spots.